everyone. Um, my name is Emily Costantino Lee, and I am the marketing and promotions manager over at the Santa Barbara Independent. Thank you so much for joining us um, for our 14th week of Downtown Business Spotlight. Um, it's an interview series hosted by the Santa Barbara Independent and Downtown Santa Barbara. Uh, we are recording this conversation and it will be up on both independent.com and downtownsb.org um, for viewing afterwards. You can also find all previous Downtown Business Spotlight recordings online in case you missed any um, a couple of weeks ago. And if you have any questions for our guests, um, please put them in the chat or the Q&A below and we will be sure to get those to them. Uh, our host today is Robin Elander. Uh, Robin is the Executive Director of Downtown Santa Barbara, um, an organization that promotes and markets over 1,200 businesses in our downtown district. She is also the Executive Director of the annual Summer Solstice Celebration. So she will be hosting our conversation today. And with that, I will turn it over to her. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Emily, for the introduction. I am so happy to be here today um, with John and Shireen um, Lee Howers from Prop and Decor um, tent and Tent Merchant. So excited to learn a little bit about their business and um, how it got started, as well as what types of things are going on right now during the holidays. And also uh, Georgia Labar from um, Celadon House. So welcome to you both. How, how are you guys doing today? Hanging in there? There's so much craziness going on in the world and just happy to be here with you all. Well, we're happy Thanks to having us <laughs> with John and Cherie. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the Prop and Decor outlet in Tent Merchant and um, mm -hmm. what people should know about it? Yeah, what you want to do? Yeah, okay. So, well, we started Tent Merchant, it, where it's an event rental business, um, probably in 2005. So we've been around for a while. And, um, but our interests have always been in decor, you know. So when this space on State Street came available uh, in 2017, it was, um, we just decided, hey, you know, let's go for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> when we did it, we had the fire and the flood happen, you know. So it was like, it was, it was kind of an interesting time to start a business, but we didn't know that was going to happen when we did it. Um, but basically, the prop and decor outlet, it was a place that we created for um, mostly accent decor pieces, a lot of, fur not as much furnishings as we would like because we, uh, we can't get as much stuff in the space that we have, but we have an online um, that people can buy furnishings on. Um, but it's been just basically something that John, and I'm speaking for both of us now, that we really enjoyed and uh, had a lot of fun with. And even given the COVID and you know all the stuff that has been happening, um, we're still finding much enjoyment and happiness in it. And you know, um, it's because of the community we're in. You know, everybody's been so loving and positive with us. Um, it's made our journey through this entire thing very good. Oh, that's wonderful. Overall. Yeah. And usually there are so many events um, in this town that yeah. um, are supporting. And so you've probably gotten to know so many people over, you know, the past few years and, you know, and now pivoting and kind of supporting people in different ways. Um, I want to come back to talking a little bit more about all of that, but um, mm -hmm. let's uh, chat a little bit with Georgia. Tell us um, about uh, Celadon House. It's such a beautiful space. I love going in there, but tell our audience a little bit about um, the business. Um, so Kelly, um, the owner of Celadon House, uh, opened the store in June of um, 2000. Um, so we've been on State Street ever since. Um, and in the beginning, Kelly um, was living in Asia or she had just got back from living in Asia. She owned a house and uh, just bought a house in Shell Beach um, and realized there was kind of a void in the market um, between San Francisco and LA when she was shopping for furnishings. Um, so she had a lot 
a extensive background in retail and decided to open this store. Um, and she was, you know, directly importing hardwood furniture over from Asia. Um, and over the years, it's really, you know, we've grown with the market and now we carry a number of domestic and international vendors that we pick um, for their quality and craftsmanship. Um, and we do carry um, home furnishings, decor, bedding, all with an emphasis on sustainable and green design. Um, we are the primary retailer for Cisco Brothers Furniture here on the uh, Central Coast. We've been working with them for over 20 years. Um, so a lot of customers come to us seeking that healthy quality furniture and we're able to offer them um, a, you know, a clean furniture and upholstery line as well as organic mattresses and bedding. Um, so yeah, so that kind of brings a lot of people in. We, we are, um, we're, you know, we're proud, uh, proud to offer a wide range of furniture. Um, and other decor and home items um, that you don't really find anywhere else here on the coast. Um, but I would say, you know, selling Cisco Brothers furniture, um, people definitely come and look for us for that. Uh, they are an LA based family run business as well, started by an immigrant from Mexico. Um, mm -hmm. Everything's handmade with sustainable hardwoods, free of chemicals and fire retardants. Um, and everything is extremely customizable. Um, so, yeah, we shop the market every six months um, and they still really stand out as one of the best um, upholstery lines in the business. So we're proud to partner with them um, and offer that to people here on the Central Coast. Um, and then in addition to the store, we also do full service interior design now um, for commercial and residential projects. So we have done a number of commercial um, commercial places on the central coast as well as restaurants um, and a number of private homes throughout California. What a niche market to get into kind of having her see all of that and then um, how long have you been with uh, the business? So I've been um, with Sell It On House for a, a little bit over five years um, and I am actually based out of our office in San Luis Obispo. Okay gotcha. Yeah. Um, the both of you, um, Kelly and Georgia, as well as John and Trine, you all have such incredible eyes for um, the type of creating a beautiful space and creating a kind of this unique experience for people. Um, John and Trine, can you tell us a little bit about you know that experience working with um, different uh, either events? event organizers or um, special projects that you're um, helping kind of get people situated for and, and a little bit about that process. Well, what did you want to talk? Do you want to, uh, well, we have the two businesses that- yeah, I guess so we have separate- um, Maybe look at each one individually. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak a bit on that. Um, Okay. Coming from the event background and being that most of the events are outdoors, and this is before COVID, mm -hmm. a lot of weddings are in the wine country. Um, and being that we started with tents, which are an outdoor item, I think we've always had a love for um, events and decor for the outdoor. And um, I think that the surroundings to a degree dictate what the decor will look like. I mean, we're in the California climate. It's very... Um, Mediterranean, the whole feel. And um, so we find that what we put in the store relates, should relate to people, the style of people's homes and the, their lifestyle. Um, one thing we, so in the store, we we're, well, recently we've added a few items that are a bit unique to the market, which would be with our background in tents, we've started making our own cabanas. Mm -hmm. um, I found there's a, um, this is again, before, well, actually it's, it's partly during COVID. COVID, the whole event business just came to an end. And I mean, just sort of died out for a few months and we had all these employees and space. So we set to work building our own cabanas and took the employees and made something very unique. And we have, we're sitting in one right here in the store. We welcome everybody to come and take a look. And it's, um, it's quite unique. And, and, it's, and with that, we've added outdoor furniture that we, we we're starting a whole new line of. So that's a little niche area that we're um, offering. Another thing we offer in the store would be the um, flatware china, 
Uh, that that comes from our event background. We, we have good connections with um, Fortessa. It's a bit large flatware company and glassware, um, linens a bit. Um, and then we have all the accessories, candles mm -hmm. and cushions and all that. So yeah, it's quite varied. Um, I personally feel a, a weird, being that it's only two years, the store where I, I let the, the, the clientele to a degree guide us and what their needs are and what they want. They'll let you know what they what they can't get and what there's a need for. And we're a little flexible in that. So we, we've sort of, with time, evolved a little bit. Um, Has Prop and Decor always been supporting um, events and major projects or has it also been supporting um, you know people's home kind of uh, goods and set up that type of thing or has it always mostly been for events and then had to pivot yeah let, let, I think I'll quickly clarify that because I think that's one of the biggest confusion everybody gets so we are the owners me and Trina of the tent merchant and we also own the prop and decor. Tent Merchant is an, a strictly a rental event business. It's been around 15 years, and that's all you rent the items. And prop and decor, you know, on our sign it says Tent Merchant slash prop and decor. Same owners, same business, but the store we're sitting in here on State Street, which is by the way next to the Apple Store, so it's easy to find, is strictly for everything's for sale. So there, it just happens to be same owners. Um, you know, so it can get confusing people, you know, they're like, what are you up to? What are you doing? Well, it's just something we chose to do. And like she said, we actually enjoy the whole selling part. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really interesting kind of, uh, one business supports the other and then also you've got this whole nother niche market and how you've pivoted with these cabanas. That sounds like a really cool, interesting pivot. What mm -hmm. about Georgia? Um, how have you and Kelly, um, pivoted during this time and how have you kind of uh, navigated this unique moment in time with the pandemic? Well, I think that the furniture industry has always had its highs and lows, um, but it's even more exaggerated now with COVID and some of the closures. Um, a lot of people have actually relocated to the area and spending so much time in their home has actually um, you know, brought a lot of interest, but it's difficult at the same time because the supply chain for our industry has been greatly affected. Um, so there's long lead times, um, you know, people are working on skeleton crews or having to take time off because someone gets COVID. Um, and, and so it's a hard reality for a lot of people to face that it might take a few months to get some of our pieces that are, you know, made to order. Um, with that being said, um, a lot of people are also doing more online shopping. Um, I, you know, it's a growing industry regardless of COVID, um, but a lot of people are spending time at home or not wanting to go out and shop. So we've actually launched an online store um, at the beginning of quarantine back around March, April. Um, and so we're just continuing to add to that, um, but it is hard for, for small brick and mortar stores to compete with a lot of the online retailers that do offer similar products, free shipping. Um, you know, here people can come, they can touch and feel the fabrics, sit on stuff. Um, it's an experience that you don't get when you're shopping online. Um, and they have, you know, we're able to offer that customer service that you're not, you don't get with an online purchase when you're just emailing somebody or you know getting a tracking number for a shipment that's going to show up on your door um so you know we've tried to pivot and launch into this online industry um but it's definitely a competitive one um and it's hard for small stores you know especially with bigger items and and then you know and we're selling stuff that people really do want to sit in and see prior to that purchase. No kidding. But it sounds like there's um, quite a bit of interest in purchasing some of these, you know, more cozy, comfortable items now because everybody's got to be home. They're realizing they're looking around their house and they're sitting on their couch. <laughs> this thing is old. I don't want to sit here anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's been a big <laughs> influx of, in some regard, been, been in a boon state. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Sorry, you cut out a little bit. I'm oh, sorry. I have heard that because of, you know, the fact that people are trying to get a little cozier at home and they're, you know, sitting on this, 
this old couch that might need a little extra love and they want to just be more comfortable. But this industry yeah. has a little bit of a boon, but it's hard to get the product. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, that's what we're experiencing, um, especially after the first three months of our own being at home. Um, there was a, you know, a boom and maybe it felt more like a boom because we hadn't been working for months, but um, but yeah, there's definitely an influx of people um, that have been, um, you know, wanting to, they realize a lot of stuff about their home or have been doing home projects since they were um, at home during that time. Um, and there's been a lot of people relocating to the area um, with more of the work from home from LA, yeah. both from the North and the South um, and kind of seeking the smaller town feel that Santa Barbara can offer. Um, so a lot of people from LA, a lot of people from San Francisco. Um, but with that being said too, a lot of our business um, prior to COVID, about 65% we would say is from out of the area. Um, and it's been difficult with the street being closed um, people can't really drive by and go, oh, that's the store I remember, you know, um, and so it's that street being closed has been a little bit difficult for our business, um, and just, you know, the decrease in tourism because people are encouraged to stay home, so uh, it's been difficult, but, you know, we're thankful for all of um, the people that have found us, the people that have reached out, um, and all of our local customers that have been really loyal and supportive during this time, um, so yeah, highs and lows always. <laughs> so true. And that's kind of that risk-taking aspect of business. There's, you know, there's so many elements to it. And then if these different factors change, you know, we've got who knew ever and whoever expected that there would be a gnarly pandemic that we would have to figure out. I mean, I remember in February, March, I mean, a lot of the work that I've done in the past is event planning. So, you know, summer solstice, as we mentioned, you know, certain, all these different events. So I've worked with Tent Merchant um, and your team over there significantly. So there's always that going on. And then we all kind of just came to a halt so unexpectedly. And I think it's still, even though we've been in this for, what is it? Eight, four months. Since March. Who's Since counting now? <laughs> March 16th, it was. Yeah, um, almost Christmas time and we're still figuring this out and we don't know when this is going to end. I think what has been amazing is just the resiliency in our community and how people are exploring different ways to do business and mm -hmm. really um, interesting to see what is possible when there's not a whole lot of things that are not possible. So I, people are finding ways Today or yesterday, I found that there's um, even a business who it's going to do drive-through um, drinks, uh, press room. <laughs> I might take them up on that. <laughs> yeah, what's the address? <laughs> Where, yeah, what's the address? We're headed over. Oh, yeah. That's on, I think that's on Ortega. <laughs> so after this call, you can go. I was like, it's almost time for happy hour. <laughs> no, we'll there. see her. <laughs> yeah, so... Talk a little bit about um, some of the things that people have been buying during this time to make their houses more cozy and in ways that people still can. I mean, there's, you know, people are, we're about to have a break here. We've still got a, a few, few days before the holidays. And what are some ways that people can, you know, either do something small or big to um, make their life a little more comfortable in their home? Um, Cherie, do you want to maybe talk a little sure. bit? Sure. Well, our store um, is loaded with a lot of um, everything. You know, it's like we have candles, soaps, teas. We have furniture, potpourri. I'm just staring at it. We have china, flatware. There's so many different things you could choose here um, that that could be something very simple and like a stocking stuffer, or it could be something more extravagant, like a new dining room table. So, uh, because we, you can buy things right off the floor here at our place. Um, so we have a lot of things here to offer our hours or, you know, we're part of the market. Like tonight we'll be open for the market, uh, which we really appreciate that. Uh, we, we get a lot of customers coming in. We really, um, we've, we really have a lot of things here that people would enjoy. And, um, 
uh, we have people that are local that come in and they come in and they just come in just to look around sometime because they just want to get out of the house and and see things and like Robin was saying touch things sit in that chair feel how it feels and actually truly shop like how it used to be you know um and so I think what I could say for us is that if there's a chance to be open, if there's a chance to um, help out uh, the community by being a part of a market or anything, we're, we're with it. John and I, since the moment uh, we could open, we have said like when we could do curbside, we did curbside. When we could open our doors and you know have people come in again, we were doing that. So we've kind of just followed the whole process. And um, for us, it's just, even though it's been kind of challenging, it's also been such a, uh, an amazing life lesson for us. And um, we're just excited. Um, we, we're just happy when people walk into the store and they're just like, oh, I'm so glad to be in here. And then they're, you know, getting things for Christmas and, and they're happy. Our online sales, I have to say, haven't been, we haven't had as many now. And I think Robin was mentioning that too. I think that's online has been kind of taken over by some of these bigger businesses. Um, but um, as far as walk-in traffic to the brick and mortar, we've had a lot more people coming in and I think the community as a whole has really made the efforts because like Robin was saying a lot of uh, business was in the past from tourism now it's some tourism and a lot of locals especially uh, Monday through uh, Thursday we see a lot of locals coming in and, and getting things for their house and I think it's really important for our our locals to know that you know your businesses are still very much open. There's the oh, one yeah. two right now as retail, even though um, it's 20% capacity. But most retail never has like a ton of people in there at once. Never. So I feel yeah. like that's well, one local stores. <laughs> we have yeah. always been at 20%, I think. <laughs> right. For us, it was just like, oh, that's what we were at all the time. <laughs> so both of your stores just feel so good to just walk around and meander and just feel like you're in a little bit of a different space in a world because you know this this outside world right now is a little wild and so if you can yeah it is escape to a beautiful place which you both have um mm -hmm. both of you have pretty large stores um particularly uh, Celadon house it's like it's huge in there it just keeps going back and there's more <laughs> couches and there's more beautiful paintings and then there's a phenomenal beautiful horse that you can enjoy <laughs> and um, all of those things so constantly uh, changing in here <laughs> very much so but I think what is special um, is that you and Kelly and certainly John and Shereen, you have created this um, environment that helps people to kind of stay calm and stay joyous in this moment of uncertainty. And I think that that's just, you know, a, a, a treat to be able to experience at this time. And so if people are watching today and they haven't been to either Saladon House, um, Georgia, why don't you share um, the address? I can't remember the top of my head at the moment. Um, so our new address is 1224 State Street. So we're just um, two doors up the street from where we had been for 19 years. Um, so we're, I think we're in an old random building. Yes, and then right mistaken. The um, Arigato yeah. and next to... Across the street from Arigato. Um, yeah. We've got the Saigon Vietnamese next door and Wendy Foster is in our old location. So right up here next to the Granada. Yeah. Awesome. And then Janashri, share your, um, your address as well. And both of you guys can share your, um, your websites just so people can peruse. Yes. I think the, the better um, experience is certainly to go in, but yes. <laughs> well, as I mentioned earlier, we're next to the Apple store. Most people know where that is. It's 930 State Street, which is right on the corner of Carrillo and State. And um, yeah, we do have a website 
for the prop and decor for our store. It's called the prop and decor.com. No, it's not. It's just prop and decor. Oh, prop and decor. And then, well, we also have one for the other business, the tentmerchant.com. So even, again, that can get a bit confusing, but <laughs> um, I would go look at both and you'll see lots of great ideas for decor. <laughs> Wonderful. Sounds good. And then you mentioned that the market is going on tonight. So I want to just give a plug for that. So the yes. Caesar's Promenade Market is a relatively new thing. It's only been going on for um, about almost two months. So every Thursday from three to seven 30. And tonight is the last one of the season. We're going to be jumping back mm -hmm. into it after a break um, for the holidays and then back in January, but it's um, three to seven 30. We have something like 30 different vendors out in the street. Um, um, and all kinds of different uh, great local artisans, um, local businesses like Prop and Decor, and um, so many things to explore. So we invite the community to come check that out. You can also shop online with that um, on our website at downtownsb.org, and there's all of the different vendors are on there in case you are being very conservative and staying home, which is completely a respectful thing uh, a respectable thing to be mm -hmm. doing in the moment. But if you are wanting to come out, this is a, a great way to shop because all of the booths are more than 10 feet uh, apart. Everybody is required mm -hmm. to wear masks. Um, and it is a, a nice festive environment for us to kind of enjoy at this point in time. So and thanks so much for being involved with it. And Georgia, you're you're invited to um, come out if you want to another time. And um, yeah, it would be a fun place to you know sell some of the uh, smaller items and things like yeah. that. Yeah, and we do have a shoppable website as well. Um, so if you go to SellItOnHouse.com. Com. From there, you can click the shop page. It links you to shopselladonhouse.com. Um, so you can visit either one of those. Um, we do have a wide selection of, of furniture um, and accessories online, um, but we do not have a lot of our holiday um, and some of the other smaller goods on there. So we always encourage people who do feel comfortable um, to come into the store if they can. It's super festive right now. Um, we have a lot of goodies for the holidays candles, books, serving boards. Um, and like John and Shereen said, every furniture item is also available for purchase off of our floor. If you're looking for some big stuff and you don't wanna wait, uh, we do have a lot in stock. Um, but yeah, our website is open 24 seven. So anyone who wants to visit that can browse some of our selection online or give us a call if you're looking for anything else. Beautiful. And do you either have any um, specials going on at this time that you want to share with our community? Um, we on the weekends have 15% off, I believe this weekend. So the last couple of weekends we've been doing 15% off um, everything in the store, something like that. Um, I just have to ask Jill about it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what we've done the last couple of weekends. Wow. That's, so this that's weekend would be a good <laughs> one five. Yeah, 15%. Awesome. So that's good. And that's Georgia, good. do you want to share on, the, on a similar front? Yeah, um, we actually have quite a few floor models on sale right now. Um, and then as far as holiday decor, um, I think we have all of our holiday decor currently and like some of the candles, 20% um, off. And then I'm sure going into this weekend, you might see an increase in, in the sale but uh we might be taking it a little bit farther this weekend as we get closer to Christmas so good chance to grab some decor items um and you know some festive holiday stuff and other than that we do have some of our furniture um on sale as well Wonderful. Well so thank you so much for uh joining us for this call um it's been great to get to know you and what you're up to. And I just commend you for being uh, pandemic warriors and local heroes at this time to uh, continue to serve the community and to continue to make our um, town a very special place to live, work and play. You guys do amazing things and it's a, uh, a really special uh, community that you have both created within your businesses that exudes into downtown. So thank you for that. Thank you for having us. 
Absolutely. We appreciate so you much. including us. We really do. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. As well. So we will be back in January for um, the next show, January 7th. Um, Emily, do you want to share a little bit about that? Um, sure. We don't have any specific um, people signed up or confirmed, I should say. Oh, but I do know that we are going to be doing um, uh, a t some kind of uh, health and wellness um, focus. Ooh. So we will be bringing on maybe some, some uh, yoga studios and uh, some maybe different foodie folks that kind of help us to oh, think of good. getting started with a brand new year. So thank you all for being here. And thank um, you, folks thank who you. will some last minute shopping these are two amazing places to go and also you can go to our website at downtownsb.org and see a whole directory of downtown businesses uh, to explore in different categories for your different shopping needs thank you and thank you emily for hosting bye, bye guys bye thanks guys bye